Dear Ursula von der Leyen and members of the European Commission, I'm standing in front of you today to present to you the case of 104 men, women and children whom the world might be losing very soon. 104 men, women and children who may have to pay with their lives as a price for choosing to believe in what they believe in. These people are members of the Ahmadi religion of peace and light. They are my people. I've been fighting for them for over a year now. I watched them being attacked by angry militias in Iraq, literally gunning down their homes while they're in there holding their kids in terror. I've watched them being brutally assaulted by a plain clothed policeman in Iran, attacking them on the streets, literally cracking their skulls open. I watched their homes being stormed into by secret police in Algeria in the middle of the night, assaulting fathers in front of daughters and husbands in front of wives. In Algeria, they were imprisoned and accused of mocking Islam and offending the Prophet. Religious decrees were issued against them, calling for them to be killed. In Iran, they were arrested and forced to sign papers to recant their faith or else face execution. My people face some of the most extreme forms of religious persecution all over the Muslim world. Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Malaysia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, and even Thailand. That is who we are, a persecuted religious minority, labeled as heretics and infidels, and regarded as apostates of Islam, because we believe in a man named Abdullah Hashim Abbas Sadiq, that he is the awaited Mahdi and the riser of the family of Muhammad. They sanctioned our killing because as part of his teachings, we believe that the headscarf for women is a choice, not an obligation. That drinking alcohol is permissible, that the five daily prayers are abrogated, and that the fasting of the month of Ramadan falls in December of each year. Our doors are open to every human being, regardless of their race or sexual orientation. And so, because our beliefs diverge from traditional Islam, and because we are tolerant of other persecuted people, we have been the target of arrests, persecutions, racist and prejudiced attacks, and acts of violence around the world. Many international human rights organizations have supported our cause and recognized our plight, such as Amnesty International, the United States Commission on International Religious Freedoms, Human Rights Without Frontiers, Freedom House, the Border Violence Monitoring Network, and many more. No Muslim country in the world would have our people. And so after the release of our Holy Gospel, the goal of the wise, and with the surge of attacks against them, they had no other choice but to flee. They gathered in Turkey, as it was the fastest country they could exit to legally. But Turkey is also a Muslim-majority country that would not tolerate their beliefs. So they decided to seek all legal pathways to apply for asylum in Bulgaria. They contacted the UNHCR in Bulgaria, the State Agency for Refugees, and even the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to request a visa on humanitarian grounds. All these efforts have been unsuccessful. Then, they did something that nobody has ever done before in that way. They decided to present themselves at the formal border crossing point on the Turkish-Bulgarian border and legally lodge their claim for asylum at the border with the Bulgarian border police. And this is in line with EU law and national Bulgarian law. An open letter was released by the Border Violence Monitoring Network endorsed by 28 human rights organizations all over the EU, urging Bulgarian authorities and Frontex to uphold their commitment to international human rights law and allow the group to lodge their claim for asylum at the border. The group decided to do so legally 
because they did not want to break any law or cut through any fence or use smugglers. They didn't think it was right to break the law of the country they want to seek asylum in. But what unfolded that day on the border was nothing short of a humanitarian crisis. After everything they've been through, they found themselves getting beaten, kicked, punched, and assaulted, with Turkish border police smacking them with batons and firing gunshots in the air, terrorizing the women and children. Then they dragged them away and detained them. And so they were being punished for following the law and for following the Bulgarian authorities' instructions to not use illegal routes and to present themselves at the designated border crossing points to apply for asylum. And that's exactly what they did. And now they are in the worst nightmare that any of them could ever imagine. They are stuck at the Turkish detention centers, about to be reported back to their home countries. If these people get deported back, it is imminent death for them. It is an immediate death sentence for the Iranians. The Iraqis will probably get assassinated too, and all the other nationalities will face imprisonment for sure for a very long time. At the same time, Turkey is not safe for them to apply for asylum. And even if they did get international humanitarian protection in Turkey, it would just be a matter of time before some fundamentalist groups in Turkey read the gospel of the religion and hunt them down in the country. Today, the deportation orders have been issued, which means we only have five days to appeal and find a solution for a safe resettlement of this group outside of Turkey, to Bulgaria or any other EU country where they can claim asylum safely and exercise their freedom of religion. And so, I urgently call for your intervention. I urgently demand that you stop the deportation and allow the group asylum in the EU as a persecuted religious minority whose members face extreme risks to their lives. I urge you to intervene by means of an exceptional procedure and grant these people protection as they are left with none. You have to do something. Europe is framing itself as the leading protector and defender of human rights and freedoms. You cannot watch silently as people in the 21st century are literally reliving the Inquisition days, running for their lives from country to country just to find protection because of their beliefs. Is that a world we want to live in? And wouldn't the EU, with the leading record of human rights and freedoms, be the first to save their lives and grant them a safe haven so they can practice their faith freely and peacefully? I'm speaking to you now not as a member of this group, but as a human rights activist who worked with various international human rights organizations around the world, including the United Nations. I was always frustrated at the bureaucracy and the inability to affect people's lives and make a difference at the time when they need it the most. I know you're probably flooded by thousands of messages like mine, but maybe just one phone call from you, one courageous political decision from you for standing up for what's right and for shaping a better and freer world, you could change the fate of over 100 people and literally save their lives. Please, I cannot and will not see my people hanging from cranes in Iran. I won't accept it. I will fight for their lives and will come here every day for the next five days, sitting on this table with my phone next to me, broadcasting live on satellite TV, waiting for your call. Yours or any of your team telling me that you will accept my people.